This is the story of two seeds, Annie Seed and Bert Seed. No, not Bird Seed, Bert Seed. Annie and Bert were corn seeds, growing on a corn cob like this one. Their mother was very proud of them because they were so healthy and were growing so big and strong. Indeed they were. The rain had made them swell up twice the size of some of the other seeds, and the wind and sun had turned their faces a wonderful gold colour. I am sure that the farmer will choose you for a very special purpose, just like he chose me, said Mother. You must trust him, for he is very wise. But Bert wasn't really listening. He was gazing out over the field, thinking of all the wonderful things he wanted to do with his life. I wonder what it would be like to fly like a bird said Bert, as he gazed into the sky. "'Well, if I were you, I shouldn't worry about that,' said his mother. "'The most important thing is to be what the farmer wants you to be.' But, once again, Bert wasn't listening. The summer passed by, and all of the corn cobs swelled up full and ripe. Eventually the time came for the farmer to harvest the corn. Most of the cobs went off to the market, but some of the biggest and best were saved as seed for the next year's crop. The farmer put the seed into sacks and stored them in a dry place inside a barn. Annie and Bert were inside one of the sacks. Bert was grumbling. This stinks, he complained. It was so much better sunbathing in the field. Now we're crammed together inside this smelly sack. There's hardly room to move. Don't worry, replied Annie. Mother told us it would be like this to start with, but things will be wonderful in the end. We must just trust the farmer. He knows what he's doing. Well, I don't think the farmer knows what he's doing at all, said Bert. I think he's forgotten about us. Oh, no, said Annie earnestly. Didn't you listen to what Mother told us? She said that the farmer will keep us warm and dry in here until the spring, and then he will take us to the field and bury us in the soil. Bury us in the soil? said Bert, horrified. That sounds awful. There are worms and slugs down there, and it's cold and wet and slimy. I'm getting out of here before it's too late. Bert, don't go, cried Annie. Please trust the farmer and stay with me. But Bert was already off. He wriggled his way through the other seeds until he reached a corner of the sack where there was a small hole. By pushing and pulling, writhing and wriggling, Bert made the hole big enough for him to squeeze through. <laughs> Who wants to do what the farmer says? chuckled Bert. Silly Annie, waiting around in this smelly old sack just to get buried in the field. With an extra strong push, Bert was through the hole and rolling across the floor of the barn. Very soon he spied a hole in the barn wall that was just the right size to hide in. He rolled inside and settled himself down. This is much better, he said to himself. 
I can wait here and see what the silly old farmer does with all the others. A few weeks later, the farmer came to the barn and filled up a large machine with all the sacks of seed. Then he drove the machine into the field and sowed all the seed in the soil. Annie landed upside down in a hole. Oh, this is the worst experience of my life, she cried. I'm cold, wet and dirty. And there's a slimy pink worm looking at me. Annie managed to turn herself the right way up. But no sooner had she done so than the farmer's machine tipped a pile of soil on top of her and she sank down underneath the earth. Oh no! What's happening? she cried. And then everything went dark and she fainted. Meanwhile, Bert was enjoying himself in his hole in the barn. <laughs> he giggled. All those other seeds have been carried off who knows where, but I am safe and warm in this little hole. Just then he heard a noise and turned to see a large black bird gazing at him. It was Crook the Rook. <laughs> Hello, stammered Bert. I'm Bert Seed. Indeed, said Crook. And very nice bird seed you look, too. In fact, I am surprised that the farmer wasn't saving you for something special. He was, said Bert proudly, but I escaped. I'm going to do what I want to do, not what the farmer wants. Oh, such a strong, independent spirit, squawked Crook. I do so like to see it in a plump seed like yourself. Now, how would you like to come flying with me? Oh, I've always wanted to fly, cried Bert excitedly. Well. Come closer, then, said Crook, in his most kind and considerate manner, and we'll be on our way. Bert rolled over to Crook in great excitement, but before it took the time to say, Get on board, Crook had picked him up in his large beak and swallowed him whole. Oh, I forgot to mention that you'd be riding inside, said Crook, as he flapped slowly away. Meanwhile, things had been happening back in the field. One warm day in spring, Annie woke up to find herself peeping out of the ground alongside many other green shoots. "'How amazing!' she exclaimed. "'I fell asleep as a seed, but I've woken up as a new corn plant.'" Over the weeks the rain fell gently to water the plants, and the sun shone warmly to encourage the flowers to develop and the seeds to grow. But the plant that grew biggest and strongest by far was Annie, proudly bearing cobs with hundreds of new seeds. Now listen, children, she said to them. Learn a lesson from your poor Uncle Bert's experience. He decided not to do what the farmer wanted, and to go his own way. But it led to disaster. 
I won't pretend that it is easy to follow the farmer's plans, but it is worth it. The difficulties are as nothing compared with the joy that comes in time.'